Hello and welcome once again to MathsWithDavid.com. I'm David Swanson and today we're looking at a Cambridge International A-level question from the P3 Pure Mathematics 3 paper on the subject of complex numbers. So as always we'll start by reading out the question. Part A. The complex number W is such that the real part of W is greater than zero and W plus 3 times the conjugate of W is I times W squared, where the conjugate of W denotes the complex conjugate of W. Find W, giving your answer in the form X plus AY, where X and Y are real. Part B. On a sketch of an Argon diagram, shade the region whose points represent complex numbers Z, which satisfy both the inequalities mod of Z minus 2I is less than equal to 2, and 0 is less than equal to the argument of z plus 2, which is less than equal to pi over 4. Calculate the greatest value of mod z for points in this region, giving your answer correct to two decimal places. OK, so in the first part we need to find out w and we're given an equation. The way we're going to do this is everywhere we see w, we're going to replace it by a complex number written out in full as x plus y i. And then we can just move the equation around a little bit and we'll be able to find out what the values of x and y are, which we're told are real. So we start by writing w plus 3w star equals i w squared as x plus y i plus 3 times by x minus y i is equal to i times by x plus y i times by x plus y i. And then if we expand all our brackets, we have x plus y i plus 3x minus 3yi equals x squared i minus 2xy minus y squared i. And then all we're going to do is gather together our real terms and our imaginary terms on either side of the equals sign. So on the left hand side there's x and there's 3x, so there's 4x minus 2yi. And on the right hand side we've got minus 2xy plus in brackets, x squared minus y squared times by i. So now, in, in, if one imaginary number equals another imaginary number, that means their real parts must equal each other, and their imaginary parts must equal each other. Because they're perpendicular, we can split this equation into two equations, equating the real parts and equating the imaginary parts, thus giving us a system of simultaneous equations that we can go ahead and solve. So in terms of the real parts, we have 4x equals minus 2xy, and in terms of the imaginary parts, we've got minus 2y equals x squared minus y squared. Now, from the first equation, we can rearrange that to find out the value of y, because if we just divide through by minus 2x, we've got y is 4x over minus 2x, so y is simply minus 2. And then if we substitute that into the second equation, we get minus 2 times minus 2, is equal to x squared minus minus 2 squared. So 4 is equal to x squared minus 4. So x squared equals 8, and x is the square root of 8, or 2 root 2. So we found x, we found y, we can write down w as 2 root 2 minus 2i. So the second part of the question, let's look at what these two inequalities are first. So we've got the mod of, six, the mod of z minus 2i is less than equal to 2. That's telling us the distance between the point z and the point 2i are always less than or equal to 2. Well, if you have points all a set distance from a given point, that actually gives us a circle when we're in a two-dimensional plane. If it were three-dimensional, it would be a sphere, but in two dimensions, it's a circle. And the distance is always less than or equal to 2, so the radius of our circle is 2. At the centre of the circle, we're saying the distance, z minus 2i, the distance from 2i. So the centre of the circle is effectively the coordinate 0, 2, and it's a circle of radius 2. Now the second part, 0 is less than or equal to the argument of z plus 2 is less than or equal to pi over 2. Now let's just say we're asking about the argument of z. If it's between 0 and pi over 2, that's between 0 degrees and 45 degrees. So we would, we would have a, a line drawn from our origin going up at 45 degrees and we'd shade below it. But we've got z plus 2 there. So in order to get to that same point, we actually need to subtract 2 from all of our values of z. Because if I have a z that's 2 less, that will give me the same argument in there, so it will, it will give this line. So essentially this is a transformation, and it's, 2 is a real number, it's, not an, it's got no imaginary component. 
So we're going to transform, we're going to shift this whole line two along to the left. So what we've got is a half line going up from x equals minus two at an angle of 45 degrees. So we draw this circle and this half line on the same graph. And if we look at the graph, we want to know what's the largest magnitude of z that we can have. So what that basically means is what's the furthest we can be away from the origin. What's the furthest we can be from zero, zero, is stay within the shaded region within the circle and below the half line. Well, if you look at the diagram, I think it's pretty clear to see that we actually, our furthest point away is the intersection point of the circle with the line. So we simply need to solve the two equations. If we've got a circle with center 0, 2 and radius 2, the equation of a circle tells us that that's x minus 0 squared or x squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 2 squared equals 4. So x squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 4. And the line, on the other hand, is going up at 45 degrees, so y goes up proportional to x, and it's going to cut the y-axis at plus 2. So it's going to be y equals x plus 2. So in order to solve these, what we could do is we could just substitute x plus 2 into the equation at the top. So where we see y, we're going to put x plus 2. So we'll get x squared plus x plus 2 minus 2, which is x squared equals 4. So 2x squared equals 4. So x is the square root of 2, which is around 1.414. y equals x plus 2, so y equals 3.414. And then we've got the magnitude of z is the square root of 1.414 squared plus 3.414 squared, which is about the square root of 13.655, which to two decimal places gives us 3.70. So let's think about how the marks are going to be assigned here. We've got five marks on the first part. The first mark is given for substituting in x plus yi instead of uh, w, uh, and, and correctly putting the x minus yi where we have the w complement. The second mark we get, if we correctly note that i squared is equal to minus 1, and we use the technique of equating the real parts and equating the imaginary parts. We get the third point for getting the value of y is minus 2. A fourth point for using a suitable method to try to solve for x to find out x. And a fifth point, an accuracy point, for getting the x value. So altogether we get w equals 2 root 2 minus 2i. And then in the second part, we've got four accuracy parts on the picture. One for getting the centre in the right place. One for getting the radius the right length. One for getting the half line starting from minus 2 on the x-axis and one for shading it in correctly, shading it in the correct place. Uh, and then we've got one, we've got two more marks, six marks all together. We've got one method mark for using a suitable solution to find out the greatest uh, magnitude, the greatest value of mod z. And then an accuracy mark for correctly getting us 3.70. So I hope that's been useful. We've built up now quite a few pure mathematics questions for the P3 paper on complex numbers. So I'll put on the end of this video a, a link to the playlist so you can watch through those to your heart's content. Uh, I also recommend that you browse around at www.mathswithdavid.com for other advice and guidance around these. And I'll put a link at the end so you can subscribe to this channel and be updated of any new videos. Hope the video was useful. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.